I used to think Alpha Rad was a good dude, and they started collabing with Wolf Glick and showed to be a bad actor that doesn't care about cheating in competitive games. And it was no secret Wolfie was a cheater when Alpha Rad started working with him. All you have to do is go back to the World Championships 2012 and you see full shiny legendary teams with perfect IVs and hidden power. Alright, so that's cheating. He's also friends with people like Ray Rizzo, who got caught with the Dream Ball Aegislash, Impossible Kurt Ball Politoed, and then there's chat logs of him talking about how, like, ginning Pokemon is cool. And then there's the Dream Ball Raichu, also his 1 in 25 million event Raichu that he used to win Worlds that he somehow had two of, and obtained it within a month of Worlds with no documentation whatsoever. Wolfie uses hacked Pokemon. And since they started working together, we have even more proof of Wolfie being a cheater. Ironically, the Moltres that Wolf got caught with for hacking was from someone named Normie Girl. So a fan of both of them hacked a Moltres for Wolf to use in a competitive Pokemon VGC setting. The Pokemon Players Cups were replacements for internationals during COVID, and then for the 25th anniversary Invitational, Wolf brought two more hacked Pokemon with the Groudon and Incineroar, on top of just like other suspicious Pokemon and teams that he's used throughout his career. So there's no ignorance around Wolfie being a cheater and becoming friends with a cheater, and then this video from Alpharad, the Pokemon controversy, really seals that Alpharad defends cheating because he's just as bad as everyone else. Yeah, and then Worlds happened uh, for Pokemon. Oh, you you and me, you want to talk about the controversy? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we should. Uh, yeah. It's so lame, so incredibly lame. So now you can see the people Alpha Rad associates with. They call cheaters getting disqualified from the largest Pokemon event lame. There shouldn't be a controversy that players got disqualified. The controversy should be all the cheating at Pokemon, but no one else talks about cheating being wrong. But since every creator in the Pokemon community, including Alpha Rad, is a bad actor, they don't care about cheating. For Pokemon, they don't normally hack check Pokemon, but Worlds was in Japan this time. Lie, they do hack check. There's always been a hack check. The problem is the hack check has been reverse engineered by the hackers to where it's very difficult to get caught if you hack your Pokemon very properly. They updated the hack check. So that means all of these complacent cheaters got dinged. And it's weird how they're making fun like Worlds was in Japan. Yeah, that's why it happened because cheating is wrong. The devs are against it. And it's also illegal to hack your games in the country where Pokemon is based in. So they... I think it's so unbelievably lame that they were eliminating people that were already uh, already winning games. Dude. That's all they could say. Cheaters getting disqualified is lame. And there were so many cheaters, it was actually impossible to hack check all of them in a timely manner. If you are winning games, that means you especially need to be disqualified. And it doesn't matter how late it happens. That when there's less and less players in the field, it becomes easier to do the advanced hack check on all of them. There is someone... Uh, okay, I felt super bad for this guy. I don't remember his name. Wolfie told me about him. Uh, he was up, he was 5-0 and makes a big deal about how he gets all of his Pokemon legitimate. The mm -hmm. Cresselia on his team, he has been trading up since generation five. And he Jesus. found out at this tournament that someone 10 years ago traded him a hack Cresselia and he didn't know. That's just wrong. Like you can't call that a legit player because a legit player would be suspicious of a generation five Cresselia because that means when he got the Cresselia 10 years ago, he did not care about that Cresselia's legitimacy. And now that we have judge tools, you can go look at that and be like, hmm, a best Cresselia from generation five or like suspicious trainer data from generation five. I probably shouldn't use this because it was hacked in a time where every Pokemon was hacked as well. Also, if this person has been playing for the last decade, it removes the inaccessibility argument because people are like, oh, you shouldn't have to buy Pokemon Sword and Shield with the DLC. But then that means this player has had many attempts to get a Cresselia legitimately and didn't. It, it becomes very hard to take their claim of legitimacy when they're so, when they don't care about the rules. They have no respect for the rules, which is why they ended up getting caught. So I don't feel bad that someone got disqualified for having a hacked Pokemon. It's in the rules, regardless if traded for. How do you even test to see if a Pokemon was hacked? Asks Bobby. Uh, with hacks. 
<laughs> which that why why are they laughing about this people are saying like oh they should give or game freak needs to give players a way to test their pokemon that all that means is that cheaters will just keep hacking their pokemon until it passes the hack check and then cheating is impossible to detect and only gets worse from there it's pure stupidity and then with this like how do you check your pokemon's hacked with hacks or you don't deal with hacked pokemon which is the most fucked solution. If you ask someone how to check if a Pokemon's legitimate, it's PK Hex. It, it feels like if that's the solution, this shouldn't be the problem. I I don't even get what that means. You know? Yeah. I, I, I think it's it's the thing too where it's like it wasn't consistently done throughout the year. Why why do it at Worlds? Why do it at Worlds? The largest event! Why not enforce cheating at the largest event in Japan? Yeah, especially when you have all these things like the 2022 World Champion getting caught cheating. You also have all these other hack checks from Kurt. Turns out pretty much everyone topping events and winning regionals is cheating their Pokemon. That means, hey, we need to do something and make sure our hack check catches these cheaters. And it did. So why start enforcing it at the most important tournament? Well, a tournament that people have invested heavily to also go Also paid for. thousands of dollars yeah, to get exactly. out here. They answer their own question. Why are you enforcing the rules at the largest tournament? Also trying to like feign sympathy with the bad actor face cam. Oh man, I feel so bad. These cheaters lost thousands of dollars. How do we feel bad for cheaters? They're the ones there to steal thousands of dollars from legitimate players at all the events they attend. It's like that is a, a huge investment to even go in the first place and like Honestly, if I were a competitor, I, I would feel I would not even feel good winning an event where if I'm the Cresselia were... guy, I'm like giving up. None yeah, he quit competitive from... apparently. Oh, the Cresselia guy did quit, which is so valid. Good. Cheaters deserve to get disqualified into oblivion, lose thousands of dollars, and then quit. Good. We lost a cheater. Who's feeling bad about that? No one. The biggest problem is the Pokemon company is corrupt and they're not doing the proper disqualifications even after we've seen so much cheating and confirmed other cheaters winning many other events. I, like, mean, I, I stand yeah, with them. That's fucked. Standing with cheaters. Let's go. Here's my thing. Enamorous is a trick room sweeper and you want it to have zero speed IV and zero attack IV. And to check for that, you have to play Legends Arceus. There's no way to check it in Legends Arceus. So you have to trade it to Pokemon Home. And then let's say you have a shitty Crystal or a shitty Enamorous. Uh oh, play Legends Arceus again. Beat the game again. Okay, if you want a powerful Pokemon, you have to put in the work. Also, incredibly dishonest because Enamorous ended up not even being a relevant competitive Pokemon for VGC. <laughs> it's not only does it take a lot of time, it's also very expensive if you want to start incorporating Pokemon like Landorus, Enamorous, right, uh, right. Groudon. Is... And then just going with these lies I've debunked. If you're participating in Pokemon, you're playing Pokemon. Almost all the players participating in Pokemon events have been playing Pokemon for many years and generations. You can't even say, oh, the guy that got second place is new to VGC because he's been playing Pokemon singles for a long time. So if you're inside Pokemon, that means you already had Pokemon Sword and Shield, which was a great game. And if you get the DLC, it's not like you're forced to play pay $90 for a trash game. The DLC completes Pokemon Sword and Shield. And then that gives you the accessibility to the legendary Pokemon. But you don't even need that. All you have to do is play an Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And then you could skip multiple generations. And then you have usable legendary Pokemon. Or if you already have Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That's the thing about all these cheaters that have gotten disqualified. And all these people that are trying to defend cheating. Is that they don't respect the rules. And they never cared about the games. And you, you only have to go back one generation now to get the legendary Pokemon for Sword and Shield which 26 million people have played more than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at this time. And that means at worst, it's a $30 investment for the DLC. If you were playing Pokemon Sword and Shield, didn't care about competitive last generation, and suddenly only care now? That's kind of weird, but all right. And even then, there's still going to be millions of DLC downloads. Also, the Nintendo Switch is even better for accessibility because you just make a new save file and you can get an Urshifu in under two hours, trade it away to someone, repeat the process, unlimited legendary Pokemon fairly quickly. So there's no accessibility issues. And three of the top four most selling games in the 3DS era 
are Pokemon games. We have XY, Omega Beam Off, Sapphire, Pokemon, Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon still having over 9 million units for the legendary Pokemon acquisition, which is actually pretty easy. I also need to make it clear because the Pokemon community is just that bad faith and stupid. If you're coming in late to any game or esport, you are going to have a natural disadvantage and you will need to catch up. Congratulations, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is your first Pokemon game since Red and Blue and you want to play competitive. That doesn't entitle you to a complete save file of every Pokemon game before you for free. You can't walk into a golf retailer and say you're entitled to a free set of clubs and all of the equipment because you're starting at the age of 30 and everyone else that's 30 already has their equipment from when they played in college. Also, further proving that Pokemon is more accessible than most other sports or esports because a starter set of golf equipment is going to be more than any of these calculations people are doing to get into Pokemon. Even if we go with the lie that it costs $500 to get into competitive Pokemon, that's for everything. That is all the money you will have to spend to get into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet all by yourself, even though the rules don't demand that you do it all by yourself. That's almost the minimum of what you have to pay to play your first game of golf. Now, I know some idiot is going to say, oh, well, you can go down to Goodwill and get a set of golf clubs for 20 bucks, but you also need tea, bag, other equipment, so it's going to cost $100 thrift, and that equipment is going to be so crap that's going to be almost impossible to develop any skill on, even casually. So if you want a competitive chance to even begin golfing, you have to spend more money than Pokemon, and also more time and coaching and all that other stuff. And then, of course, the bring back national decks hypocrisy, because removing the national decks in Generation 8, worst thing ever, expanding the decks for Generation 9, worst thing ever. So no one complained about how this is a win for accessibility back in Pokemon Sword and Shield when they crunch down on the decks, and then Game Freak responds to all the people that are crying, and then the hypocrisy is just, no, decks bad, transfer bad, even though no one had a problem with it before, it's only when the cheaters are getting caught, because it turns out everyone's cheating. Whoa. Um, to be honest, I only sympathize with those who didn't know that they had hacked Pokemon. Okay, like, I, I understand that sentiment. Because, obviously, everyone who had hacked Pokemon, they know it's against the rules. Like, like you're not going to surprise them by saying, oh, they know it's not allowed. But they're just upset that that's the state because it offers no competitive advantage. And another lie that I've debunked a million times on countless videos on this channel. Time is an advantage. Having more resources is an advantage. The player with 200 hours of experience with countless Pokemon that they can use to build a team has an objective advantage over the player with only 5 hours of battle experience and 10 usable Pokemon. And they can't adapt to the meta quickly enough because by the time they make a new Pokemon, an entirely new meta has been cheated. Pokemon is no different than any other form of competition. You need to put in the work if you want to be elite. Right, I think that's the thing. It's like, you are just the person that spends 50 hours trying to get their team built is going to be worse than the person that just invested all that time actually playing the game. That's literally admitting it's an advantage. The player that's following the rules is worse than the player that's breaking the rules. Gaining an advantage by breaking the rules is the literal definition of cheating. You're not getting any better at Pokemon by hatching eggs or it just changing saves you know, time because I think the people. And it's always that. It doesn't give a competitive advantage, but it saves time. Time is an objective advantage. It's these entitled scumbags that are fucking ruining Pokemon, and then they get into influencer positions because millennials and Zoomers don't want to work for any of their things, and all they do is cry and complain and be brats. So when you pander to the always online younger generation, you're going to get more favor. If that even if that means doing the opposite of the right thing these people just can't come out and say cheating is wrong it's always all this like deflection and not really addressing the problem and then like defeating it but and also my sympathies instead of just like the hard fact cheating is wrong the deeper i get in this video the more i'm like wow alpha red is just a shitty person people are really missing the big picture it's because to qualify for worlds it's not like you had one team for the full season you know yeah you right. make you a make new team teams. for every yeah. season and it's so possible for you to make a team and then realize, oh, this Pokemon doesn't work. I need to add another one. And sometimes right. you come up with a whole new team altogether. Admitting it's an advantage. 
Because the player that does all that legitimately and then has to make another team is behind another 50 hours to the person breaking the rules. And saying Pokemon Showdown exists is not a counter-argument because the team still needs to be made in-game. That time still needs to be spent, and there's still a very high possibility that by the time you practice in Showdown, make the team, test it, you're still going to realize some flaws inside the game, so you might have to make another two or three Pokemon or drastically change your team despite using Pokemon Showdown, and you're still out all that time against the cheater that now has a massive advantage over you, which is why it's only cheaters winning these events and why so many cheaters got disqualified at Worlds. I had the debate with last year's Worlds second place, where he said he believes 95% of players at Pokemon Worlds 2023 used Gen Pokemon. That is how bad it is, and that just really proves that it gives an advantage because you can't win without cheating. And that doesn't make cheating okay. Like, it's just not, it's just not really, like, if other people are like grinding on showdown and stuff like that you kind of have to use third-party software to even test your team and then to yeah. make your that's trying to like be a jab at the rules like oh people using pokemon showdown are using third-party software which is against the rules no the rules are to modify or create items or pokemon in a player's battle team is forbidden showdown isn't creating pokemon through third party that's what pk hex is for he's also being really dishonest because pokemon showdown is not mandatory for like practicing teams and stuff you can still do it all in game and in a world where no one cheated and everyone had to make their pokemon in game at some point pokemon showdown wouldn't have as much value it's an imperfect simulator with a different meta that isn't reflective of what happens inside the game the in-game ladder is going to be closer to vgc than the pokemon showdown ladder which has different players and different goals and also being able to swap out your teams instantly all the time build it in scarlet violet i think what everybody really needs is let's not hack pokemon let's just have just give us a battle client where we can just use rental teams. We can set the EV yeah. IV. Like the reason why Game Freak hasn't done that is because unlike you motherfuckers that actually don't care anything about Pokemon, they still find Pokemon to be special. That every Pokemon is its own unique creature and you should be training and becoming a Pokemon trainer even for competing in the highest levels of competition. The rules make it clear that the creators of Pokemon want you to engage with all aspects of the game and have natural gameplay even to compete at the highest levels. The cheating problem has been a major issue from the beginning, and what the recent Pokemon Worlds with all the disqualification shows and all the players just kind of like even coming out and admitting to cheating, which is something Alpha Rad doesn't address. We have players that have won regional championships instructing people how to cheat to get past the hat check and then admitting to using hacked Pokemon at Worlds but no condemnation of them because they all defend cheating. It's impossible for these bad actors to say that cheating is wrong because then they don't have the easy way anymore. And going back to that, it's like kind of showing, well, with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet having the most accessibility we have seen for competitive Pokemon, and also just even modern Pokemon with all the quality of life changes to breeding, making Pokemon one of the most accessible games and forms of competition in all of esports. The barrier to entry for Pokemon is lower than most other games. And even like going into sports, especially sports and other games like chess, Pokemon is one of the most accessible, but again, it's all lies and hypocrisy and bad faith because it turns out cheaters aren't honest. So we take like all this quality of life and 95% plus players are still cheating. So it was all cheating back in 2012 as well, especially when you see shiny legendary hack teams and stuff also rng was clearly against the rules because it does not follow natural gameplay also you need 30 party tools to use a reverse engineered seed of the game which clearly violates the rules like it, it should be obvious cheating means no hacking whatsoever no hacking at all and the pokemon company also has stated through support that if you use like a hack ditto to breed pokemon all those offspring are deemed illegitimate and cheated so it just kind of shows no hacking anywhere. There's no way of cheating your way around the rules. Also, the RNG argument doesn't hold up because it would take less time to get a competitive team now in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet than to RNG perfect shiny legendary Pokemon in Generation 5, and they couldn't even play legit now. So they're not spending more time back then. And again, we have chat logs from champions like Ray Rizzo say saying that they gen their Pokemon and they didn't RNG. 
Also, with Wolf's Raichu, Blissey even admitted there were no RNG manips in Generation 6's lifetime. So this is kind of showing how bad faith even Blissey's video is because RNG did not exist for Wolf. That can further be proven by the releases for the versions of the RNG tool that the first public release was 0 0.7. So it's also not going to be as efficient or effective as the one that Blissey showed, especially with all the time. And that was June of 2017. So yeah, like, and if you go back to any post, there was no existence in 2016 of any Generation 6 RNG manip by the person posting it and then showing all the gods and then admitting to it. Also, Wolf's teammate Marcus, that used the same Raichu, doesn't have a consistent story because when interviewed by Blissey, just says garbage like, but as far as I remember, I didn't RNG in Gen 6, instead of just saying it didn't exist because he's just hacking the Pokemon. So yeah, there's no way around it. Cheating is wrong, and for some reason, these losers just can't admit to it, and then they keep deflecting with like, well, if we had a battle simulator, we don't, and the rules are still being broken here, why is it so hard to say cheating is wrong? Battle client, where we can just use rental teams, we can set the EV yeah, IV. Exactly. Like, that's go, what people like want. The... Like, us hacking in Pokemon is an answer to a solution, or like, an answer to a problem that we don't even like in the first place. Then don't compete. If you can't follow the rules, you have no right to competition, which is why these players got disqualified, and there should be absolutely no sympathy in any way for the money and time lost and all of that other stuff. Almost every single competitor at Worlds is a cheater, which means they cheated to got there, which is supported by all the data mines that Kurt has done and the history of competitive Pokemon, just kind of showing it's all cheaters and it's all people defending cheating. And again, all sports and esports demand hard work and sacrifice. Pokemon is no different. That doesn't make an excuse for cheating. That doesn't mean that Game Freak's doing anything wrong with the rules. If you have a problem with it, don't play. Stay out. Let the good guys play. Oh, or zero it, Ivy Bottle Cap. Sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they, they just need to make it. To, like, if you're going to go and make it that easy already, like, mm -hmm. if you just have these items, just, just give us a, a way to generate it. And also, as shown by the entire history of competitive Pokemon, the zero IV bottle cap would do literally nothing because everyone is still cheating, no matter how easy it gets. It's just moving the goalpost back until we get a battle simulator, and then they're going to say, and see, we were right to cheat all along because we ended up getting what we wanted. Yeah, I think like everything. you and I are in the position because I don't think Nuzlockers. I don't think there's any Nuzlocker who is not going to say we prefer the faster. We we want rare candies, <laughs> you know. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I think just make like um, just make showdown. Just make showdown with yeah. models in game, and I guarantee you there was nobody at Worlds that qualified by only playing exclusively on cart. Yeah, I. Well, that's because cheating gives a massive advantage that makes it impossible to compete, even if you play exclusively on cart, even if they had the potential and the skill to qualify for Worlds. I think we just, like, sh people use Showdown. Every, like, even the top competitors who don't stream Showdown, they play it, right? Yeah. Because a lot of Pokemon creators only want to make Pokemon in it, especially if they're affiliated with Pokemon, like Casters. Like, even talking, like, Wolf Air and stuff. Like, everyone test teams on Showdown. Right. And yeah, that's just I mean, you how have it goes. To. There's just... Like, there, there's so many Pokemon in the game. If you just want to test some, like, niche pick, you don't want to have to go out of your way to go get that Pokemon, grind the Terra Shards to give it the right Terra type. Yeah, the Terra the Shards EV are crazy. Training. Yeah, I the think... Terra Shards are ridiculous. I don't understand the point of saying all that. Like, it still doesn't justify cheating in any way. Shards are ridiculous. L let's entertain the other side of the logic. Let's say we only want you to use Pokemon in-game. We, like, no ginning, no ginning. I think that's understandable because those are the rules, obviously. But, mm -hmm. but I think having like you want zero IV on certain Pokemon and not having any way to achieve that in game is bad. Yes. I don't. Again, all the cheating just proves that that, that goalpost would be moved until. Like, if you cannot get a Pokemon in game as fast as it takes to hack, people will always hack and it will be 99% of competitors. Like. Like, I like Regulation uh, a C the most because mm -hmm. it was all Pokemon native to Scarlet Violet. Right. I right. think as soon as we start allowing, like, other games, other Pokemon from other games, that's when I'm like, I don't even love that if we have such restricted exactly. tools for everything. Wasn't a problem in Generation 7 and earlier, only when cheaters are getting caught, even though it's easier and more accessible to get the 
other game Pokemon now than it was in Generation 7 when no one complained, and then everyone complained about the dex cut in Generation 8. Scumbags. Because it's the same people who argue the logic of like, well, we don't want Smash Bros. tournaments to have money because it shouldn't be a career. It's like, dude, if you're making a competitive Pokemon team, how the fuck do I have time with a 9 to 5 job? <laughs> you actually easily have time with a 9 to 5 job. Olympic athletes, pro chess players, other esports competitors, they don't have a problem. You just have to d sacrifice everything for it because you're playing professionally. You are at the elite level. That is one of the gates that exists for all forms of competition. Pokemon's no different, and even with all that, it's still one of the most accessible. These are all brats that have never worked for anything in their life, or even really cared about playing the Pokemon games, and it shows. Exactly, yeah. Like, the way that they're setting it up, you either yeah. A, have to do all the stuff yourself, which is a huge time sink, and if you, if you are going to even be able to afford to get to Japan, unless you are one of the elite of the elite that gets paid to go out there, yeah. you're probably not going to be able to go. Bad actors learn what competition is for the first time. That's the only way that this can be described, because if you think about it for a sport, a sport is going to take thousands of hours to get professional, more time, more money, you're going to need coaching, you're going to need to spend crazy amounts on diet and nutrition, even a dietitian is going to give you an advantage, also equipment, and that's just the way the world works. If you got more time and money than someone else for whatever reason, you're going to have an advantage. That's a legal advantage, and that doesn't allow other people to cheat. You can't go, I'm lower middle class, therefore I'm allowed to take steroids. Does not apply anywhere else. Pokemon is no different. B, you have to pay someone else, which is also an investment, mm -hmm. and that leads to you getting scammed. You know, somebody could just hack in the be like, yeah, dude, these are totally legit. Which that happened, like, you know? Like, yeah. I do feel bad for... Because it, it's... Why do you feel bad? If, if everyone cheats, like, it is no surprise that everyone is cheating in Pokemon. No one wants to be honest about it, except for Guillermo. I have to respect him on that. World second place says over 95% of players are cheating. You are collabing with a cheater who already got caught cheating long before you were collabing with him. And anyone that goes into the history of Pokemon, that's another thing about any sport or esport. You gotta go back a little bit, do your research, learn the history, get a better game understanding from the past. And then you go to the past like, wait a second, hmm. There's no way they got all these legitimate. And that's what I mean. Like, all it is is, like, this brainwashing and self-convincing to justify cheating being okay. And then the rules are the problem. The entitlement and cognitive dissonance to refuse to accept doing the right thing shatters these people's brains. And you can see it in real time. It's also, like, people say, use the core mechanics of the game to make your team. And it's like, what about trading? Not that one. That's a lie, though. Like, people are kind of using the email from the Pokemon company saying, watch out for trading, except that's nothing new because it's always been in the rules that, you know, you will be disqualified regardless of whether the Pokemon or items belong to that player or were traded for. And it's not a fault of the game mechanics that everyone is cheating. The risk doesn't exist because of Game Freak or the rules. It exists because 99% of players are cheating scumbags. And if influencers like you weren't bad actors and helped put pressure on the Pokemon company, then cheating would be much more enforced and a lot of the cheating would be stomped out or not as favorable. And then that would at least make it more likely the Pokemon you are receiving in a trade is legitimate. And then there's actually like a Pokemon trading economy. Yes, there is the unfortunate, sad reality that cheating will exist in all forms of competition, in all games. People will piss clean even though they're still on steroids. There's going to be cheating in... FPS and all kinds of other games, but that doesn't mean you just roll over and accept it But again, Pokemon's the only thing that has like so much entitlement so many losers where it's just all about c Convincing yourself that cheating is the right thing Right, please don't do trades because those could be hacked Which could, <laughs> could lead to you being yeah. disqualified. Yeah, bad faith like of course they couldn't then enforce like oh If it's not your original trainer ID then then it's fair game because then everyone just trades Pokemon from hack saves, right? Kind of from what I talked to, like, a lot of uh, top players, like, the at Worlds, was there were a few people who do everything legitimately, and that shocks me. But kind of what I heard from... Well, almost all of them are lying to you. And also, we're going to learn that they aren't legitimate. This was crazy to me. Not even I knew this. Thanks, Alpharad, for confirming for me that there's more cheaters than I thought, and you're getting this from the cheaters themselves. What I heard from most was that some would have 
their switch where they have everything on and then they have a separate modded switch and they don't like gin pokemon they would trade legitimate pokemon from their first switch to the other one just to be extra safe but they hacked all the material now your pokemon is illegal the use of external devices such as a mobile app to modify or create items or Pokemon. Items comes before Pokemon in the rules. So if you hack in vitamins, Terra shards, bottle caps, any, all hacking is just not allowed. It's impossible to get around that. Cheating is wrong. Any form of cheating is covered by these rules. It is the most simple, hard to fuck up rules. And yet the Pokemon community cannot cope. These are not legitimate players, and this also seems to be a trend with Pokemon that pass Kurt's hack check, but be just because they pass doesn't mean they're not cheating. We see this with Wolf's Pokemon, confirmed cheater has gotten past the hack check, same thing for Marcus, but also because they're trading to a different switch and then having a hacker touch those Pokemon to then make them illegal and then come back even though it's all being done in game, so it's harder to get caught as cheating. Still against the rules, so there's objectively nothing legitimate about it, also, going back to the thing I talked about earlier, where, like, you can't even hack a ditto and then breed. So, yeah, no hacking involved anywhere at any time for a legitimate player. Not hard. But then they had, like, Terra Shards on there, because, like, that's undetectable. Right. There's no way they're going to know that you... The, the Terra Shards were fake. Yeah. You didn't act Still cheating. Just call it cheating, but you can't because you're bad actors. Actually grind raids to get all those Terra Shards. Yeah, so it felt like that was it, but that's still, again, like another $300 investment, right? Yeah, what if I ha- Oh, they spend $300, therefore accessibility problem, but they have to cheat to accomplish that. And so also, it could just be one person that has this on the Switch that has all their hack stuff anyways, so you just trade your legitimate Pokemon to them. And you know they're just not going to, like, modify or peek a hex to the Pokemon, then they trade it back, and it's okay. So, yeah, deflect, instead of being like, this is cheating, deflecting to it somehow being about accessibility or spending money, because now you have to spend too much money to cheat in Pokemon? Disgusting. Hack my Pokemon be shiny. Good for you, man. Yeah, I always wonder, like, how deep that... Modify Pokemon. Got it. The hack checks go, but I, I guess it's like... Uh, what if I hack Legends Arceus to spawn Enamorous a mi like a million times, catch them all? Like, can they can they tell? It's still cheating, even if you don't get caught. That was kind of like the summary from this uh, with Guillermo. The summary of this two and a half hour debate is: if you don't get caught, you're not cheating. It's still against the rules to hack in Pokemon on another game and then, like, transfer them to where they can't be detected in a weird way. Or, like, spawning it in. Except I'm pretty sure those Enamorous would be flagged because the catch is a very specific encounter. So you're just better off, like, hacking the Enamorous in Pokemon Legends with the attributes of the special encounter Enamorous instead of just, like, spawning it somewhere random and catching it and then it having an invalid location data. Oh, wait a second. Hello, Wolfie's Moltres. It all comes full circle. Wow. Except Wolf's Moltres is kind of the same, but also different because it has memory data for a mystical place, but it does show as caught in the fields of honor, which is why it didn't get hack check. But if this shows like a mystical place or just the wrong area, then it would get detected by the hack check. That just kind of shows how hacked Wolfie's Pokemon was. You can't just like catch something in an impossible place. That will get flagged. I don't know. I... I, I, but I feel like you're playing around it at that point. I, you're not. I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think there's yeah. like specific Pokemon that you aren't even feasible like with your trainer ID, and so if you have a Pokemon like that, then that's how it gets oh, detected as so being obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, following the rules is like that. He's calling it obnoxious when it's like, oh, it's obnoxious. All the details you have to worry about when cheating. But yeah, that's why when I saw Alpharad working with Wolf, I knew what it meant. It means Alpharad is a bad dude. He doesn't care about cheating. He doesn't care about the lying to cover it up. He doesn't care about Wolf defaming me with more lies because I caught him cheating. And he also doesn't care that all of these players are stealers and prize money from people following the rules. This is what I mean when I say every Pokemon influencer is a bad person. If they aren't explicitly coming out and saying cheating is wrong and we need to do something about cheating and condemning the cheaters, they are bad people. It's not hard, and for some reason, we only see this in Pokemon. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.